Hello and welcome. This is Ismail again. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you some of the practical ways of following the data processing steps that we covered in the last video. So before we start anything, especially when it comes to you know data processing in any form, by now we know that we should probably load deploy R into our environment. Um, let's also add tidy R. Okay, so again, these two packages have been covered extensively in the first part of this course and we're just going to go ahead and load those because they are pretty common for use when dealing with data in R. Uh, we can just get rid of the warning. Now for the sake of this video I'm going to be using the Star Wars data set so you might be familiar with this data set we did use it in some of the earlier sections so you can go ahead and just view the data set like so to get an idea of it right we have a name column height mass and if you want you could actually also just pull it up in the viewer in the data viewer using the view function and there we go we get a larger view of the data and so we have a bunch of variables a bunch of features or columns if you will you know we have skin color we have eye color um, you can order, you know, organize. We have the sex, we have the gender, we have the homeland or the home world, species, the films that characters showed up in, the height, the mass, etc. So we have a lot of data here, and you can actually filter, you know, based on each one. You can view the distribution. Right here, we can see that there does seem to be an outlier. Here, um, hair color, we can just filter for white. I have my caps lock on just filter for white and we see the only the white ones and then within that we want the, the those that have fair skin and so on and so forth we know how to do this using code in our notebook as we've done so many times before using the plier right but that's just how to quickly like explore the data now there is a very useful function or a very useful package in R called skim R and let's go ahead and load that so this is not a package that we've used before. I might have showed it to you briefly. You know, it's not something we use that often. We have to install it. So install packages, skim R. Let's just let that install. And this package allows you to, to get a very quick snapshot into your data. A lot of the, the statistics and the stuff that we were lo looking at, the distributions and that kind of stuff, it gives it all to you. The different variables that exist the types of variables there are uh, how many missing values there are in each variable that kind of stuff so it summarizes for you the data and so in order to use that so let's load skim r and the function we want to use is called skim so let's skim the star wars data set and there we go we get this very nice view of the data set. So we get a data summary. It gives us the name of the data set, the number of rows. So we have 87 rows, the number of columns, 14, the different types of columns we have. So we have eight character columns. Um, so we're going to need to do some vectorization on those, right? Uh, we need to convert those into numeric variables. We do have three numeric columns and then we have three that contain lists uh, and that's something we're not going to be covering in this course but keep in mind that you know you can have lists or vectors within columns but that's uh, too advanced for us at this point and so then you can see the different character variables so we have name hair color skin color eye color sex gender home world species and the number of missing variables or the missing values for each variable and the completeness rate. So, you know, what percentage of those values are not missing? So, you know, this is 94%, which is pretty high, right? But it's not 100%. Uh, these are 100% not missing, 100% complete. This is 95. So this is pretty low, 88% um, or 88.5% of this, of the home world variable is missing. So that's definitely something we need to take care of. And then we have here the numeric variables and we can see the distribution, their means. So you can see that the means are all over the place. This one has a mean that's, you know, almost twice as much as this one. The standard deviation is also all over the place. So, you know, this should ideally be 
um, normalized or standardized, which we're going to do as well. So just to make it easier, let us actually select some columns to work with. Okay, and just assume that the data set consists of just those columns. So let's select height, mass and gender. Okay. So we have height, mass, and gender, and we can print that out. So let's just work with these three columns. Okay, forget all the other columns, just to keep everything simple. Uh, and then you can go back and you can do what we're doing, all the pre-processing we're doing on the whole data set if you want. Okay, so the first thing, remember, before anything else, we need to sample our data. We need to split it, I mean, into um, training and testing data. And we could do this on our own using the square bracket. So we could take data and then just square bracket and then randomly generate some numbers and then use that to split the data and that kind of stuff. And that's completely doable, but it's unnecessary. Um, we have a package called our sample from the tidy models ecosystem, and we should actually install. Let's go ahead and install our sample first. So that's installing. Once it's installed, we're going to be using a function within our sample called initial underscore split. So let's go ahead and start writing this. So so let's create a variable called data split, which will contain the split. So, okay, there we go. It's downloaded and it's loaded. So data split, let's just call the variable data split. And we create an initial split. An initial split is a function from our sample that we just loaded into our, our environment. And what are we initially splitting? The data that we have from up here. Okay. Now that creates, you know, a data split object. And within it, the training data. And to access it, we can just use the training function again from our sample. So training data split. And we have the test data, and then we use a testing function, data split. Okay, so we're taking our data, we're creating a data split object from it, and then we're extracting the training data from it and the testing data. And so if we run this, okay, and we pull up our environment from down here, you can see that we have now a data test data set and a data train data set. So remember how we had 87 rows for data. Now we have 21 rows for the testing data and 66 for the training data. So if we were to actually test that out, 21 divided by 87, um, that is in fact like 24%, right? And then 66 divided by 67. Um, is about 75 percent so they used a split of 75 to 25 i said in my presentation 80 to 20 or 7 to 30 would be good um, so this is right there in the middle so now we're going to ignore data test we're not going to use data test at all and we're going to work on data train that's what we're going to use for all our work and at the very end, we can validate using data test. So that's the whole point of this exercise, right? You always need to do this at the beginning of your work and then just stick with using data train. Okay. Now that we have a, a split, we can start feature engineering. So, so feature engineering, remember, means creating new features or variables. Now we, have enough knowledge on this data set to understand that you know this is height and mass and gender something that a lot of you might know about is bmi right and bmi is a formula of mass and height so we can actually create let's say for example a bmi column and that column would be created using existing columns or existing features but it would be a new feature altogether and it might give us an edge when training our models, right? It might cause our model to become more accurate. And so it might provide useful. So let's go ahead and actually add a BMI column. Let's take data train, right? We're not using data test. 
um, let's pipe it into the mutate verb um, from deploy r and then let's create the bmi variable and that would be mass divided by height squared now again you know for some of you out there might know this stuff more than me of the bmi and, and the calculations for and that kind of stuff so this might not be that accurate it doesn't matter as long as you know we're creating a new feature and let's go ahead and run this and there we go we have this new feature this new column and that's how it looks and we want to save this into data train so that now if we were to run this we have updated data train to contain this new feature this new column so we've actually just engineered a feature this is an example of feature engineering now what about missing variables or missing values? You can see here there's there's a missing one here. To get a better idea of which ones contain missing uh, values, uh, we can use skim again, this time on, on our smaller data set. And we can see that actually all of them contain missing values. So, you know, gender has four missing values, um, height has five, and mass and BMI have quite a lot. Um, they're only 96.2% complete. Um, another way to check missing values would be using the any function. So any is an A data train. So we're running is an A on data train and you were using any to return true if there's even one an A. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. And there we go, we get true right so this proves to us that there is at least one missing value somewhere in the data set so this gives us whether or not there is any missing values in the whole data set um, in order to check if there are in any particular column we can use call sums is in a data train um, now remember if something's true, it's represented with a one. If it's false, it's represented with a zero. So if the sums of all the columns are zero, that means there are no missing value. However, if it's greater than zero, like let's say it's three, that means there are three missing values for that particular column. So here we can see that, you know, there are five for height, 21 for mass, four for gender and 21 for BMI. Okay, so now depending on the variable, it makes sense to approach it in different ways. So since five and four are pretty low, right? For, you know, they're pretty complete, 92.4%, almost 94%. Uh, we don't really have to bother too much with these missing values. We can just get rid of them. We can just drop the, the rows completely, you know, pretend that they don't exist at all. And so let's do that. Let's take data train and we use the tidy r function called drop na and we specify which na NAs to drop like from which variables so we want to drop from height and gender now if we run this see initially we had 66 rows in our training data set and now we have um, 58 rows because we dropped the missing height and gender columns now let's continue and let's fix the mass and the BMI missing value values and let's fill them in with the average of those columns so let's remember it's called imputation so mutate okay mass we want mass we want to fill the missing values of it and we can go ahead and open this up here so mass let's say this here this 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 we want to fill them with the average of the whole mass column. But we want to only do that, obviously, if it's missing. So we have to use if else. So if else is an A mass, then we want to fill it with the mean of the mass, and we do remove an A. Otherwise, we fill it with mass. So. This might seem a little complicated, it's not. What we're using here is if else, if else, and it has three parts to it. 
so this is the the part where we check it right this is the thing to check if this is true the first one is used if it's not true this the third the, the third one here is used like the second one so this is the condition and these are the the true and the false results so so we're saying if that particular row or that particular value of mass is missing then take the average of mass and calculate the average by removing any missing va values okay so that's important there otherwise just keep it the same so if we run this and let's just run this right into here as you can see now we have no missing values at all for mass and instead they're replaced by the mean of the mass column now let's do the exact same thing but this time for the BMI so if there's a missing value in BMI we take the average of the BMI otherwise we take you know the BMI this should take care of the rest of the missing values so let's save this in data training um, let's call it imputed and if we actually let's skim data training imputed and we can see that see, they're all 100% complete 100% complete so that's how we deal with missing values or incomplete data um, so let's just to make it easy for you you know let's call this feature engineering and then here we get into missing values feature engineering missing values and then now let's talk about encoding categorical data categorical data so let's work with the iris data set for this remember the iris data set we have three different species and we can skim iris to see that species there are three unique values setosa varicicolor and virginica and they each have 50 values 50 occurrences now we want to replace so this data set is almost all numeric we just have this column that we need to make numeric as well so we need to encode it right we need to vectorize it and we can see from skim r that this is actually a factor so remember how factors are actually represented by integers we can actually just take iris and we can mutate and convert the, the factor into or coerce it into an integer and there we go so the first species is represented as a one the second species as a two and then the third species as a three so this is one form of encoding categorical data definitely right this is definitely a way to do it one problem with this is that you are basically giving this variable an order which is going to be a problem because there is no real order to this species you know it's just completely random so you don't want your model to assume there to be any numerical order and so to prevent that you can do something called one hot encoding where you replace that variable with other variables so for example let's take iris okay and let us create a new variable called species versicolor and this checks if species is versicolor and if so it gives it a one otherwise it's a zero so if species is versicolor species versicolor this new variable this new feature is one otherwise it's zero and then we can do this also for species virginica so if species is virginica then give it a one otherwise give it a zero now we do not need to 
do it once more for the third species because if these are both zero that means that the species is actually setosa so these two variables are actually enough to encode all three species right if this is one then it's versicolor if this is zero and this is one then the species is virginica if they're both zero that means that the species is setosa because it's not versicolor it's not virginica and there's only one other species i hope you understand what i'm trying to say here that's pretty cool if you were to run this there we go and we can now actually remove the species variable and there we go we replace that one variable species with two so species versicolor and species virginica and see in this case that since the species here in these rows is setosa that's why they're both zero so there are three representations actually zero zero one zero or zero one now that we you know worked on on an example using the iris data set let's let's go back to our data train and then impute it right so we've created we feature engineered a new column and then we've imputed the mass and the height or we removed rows for height and gender and we've imputed mass and bmi and now we have this data set this is a categorical variable so we want to encode it uh, we can see from skim r from skim that gender contains two unique values two unique options or possibilities so if we want to use one hot encoding remember how we had three possibilities for species and iris and so we only needed two columns so in this case we have only two possibilities so we only need one column so we would mutate and let's call gender masculine would be would check if gender is equal to masculine and if so it would be one and if it's not masculine it would mean it's feminine in that case it would be zero and there we go and then we can actually again remove gender and there we go we have so this is fe feminine this is masculine 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 so on and so forth so we replaced that categorical variable with a numeric one and we can save this as data training imputed encoded okay there we go um, data training imputed encoded and there we go okay I hope you're realizing that none of this is random right we're following we're step by step organizing and, and arranging our data set right initially we had we didn't have this column we created it and then we had a bunch of missing values we dealt with those and then we had categorical variables we dealt with those now we have a completely numeric data set but you can see that the numbers are all over the place right these are all below 0 0.00 uh, or 0 0.01 uh, they're very small numbers whereas height is are very big numbers and mass are like in, in the middle and then we have just zero and one so we want to standardize or um, scale all of these to be on a very similar scale so now let's talk about feature scaling and we can go ahead and collapse um, this so we've done feature engineering missing values dealt with missing values and we've encoded categorical data now it's time for feature scaling so for that let's create a function called normalize and this takes in a feature and essentially it takes the feature subtracts from it the mean of the feature and divides it by the standard deviation of the feature so this is just a formula you can just memorize it this is how you would normalize a set of numeric numbers you take the mean of those numbers and you subtract the mean from every one of those numbers and you take the standard deviation of those numbers and you divide what you just did you know subtracting the mean from each of them you divide it by the standard deviation 
and that gives you a normalized set of numbers. And remember, normalization is where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. So if we do this to every one of these features or these columns, we're essentially going to normalize them all to all have the same mean and the same standard deviation. So let's run this so that we get the function saved into our environment. And then we can take our data, data training, imputed, encoded, and let's mutate all. And we can do this safely because we, because of our previous step where we encoded or vectorized the categorical variable, we can now just apply the normalization to all of them because they're all numeric, right? We don't need to worry about it. Mutate all normalize and normalize here refers to our function here that we just defined and if we run that there we go now they all have the same mean and the same standard deviation they're all within the same range uh, which is very cool this is very clean data and it's very ready for machine learning algorithms for mathematical algorithms for computers basically the process let's save this under data training imputed encoded and normalized okay there we go okay so now that we we've, we've completed all these steps let's create a complete pipeline complete pre processing pipeline now you see how we've been saving them all with with each step right you know the first step was imputed and then encoded and then normalized we don't need to do that i'm just doing that just to show you each step clearly but what we can do is we can actually do it all in one single pipe in one single step so so to do that let's start with the what we initially started with so the first step we we'd done was feature engineering right so we started with and actually, let me just, I don't know why that's stuck here. Anyway, so the first step we, we had here was this step. So let's take this. And let's collapse this. So we start with this step. So this step creates a new feature. And then The next step after that was dealing with missing values. So what we did was we dropped the missing gender and height, and then we also imputed missing values for mass and BMI using the mean. So let's take that. We pipe the result of this into that. So here you see we have a missing value. We run this and now we don't have a missing value. And then the next step after that was encoding categorical data. And we encoded the gender variable. So let's go ahead and add that. There we go. This is encoded. Okay. And finally, we normalized or scale the features. And that was done using this step. So we can just add that here. There we go. If we run this, you see all the steps are here. It's a single pipeline. So we're creating BMI, we're dealing with missing values here and here, and then we're encoding categorical variables or you know vectorizing them, and then we're normalizing them and and so we start with this training data here that's like this and we end up with with this which is a very nicely pre-processed and ready for machine learning version of the initial data that's the complete pipeline which is pretty cool in my opinion right there we go right you know we can save this data train pipeline and to check to make sure that this data train pipeline is the same 
as what we have here, which is data TR imputed, encoded, normalized, uh, we can use a package called Waldo. So let's go ahead and install Waldo. And here we can compare them. So library, we don't even need to load it. We can just use Waldo. Remember the du double colon allows you to use the wall, the name st space of the Waldo package. So without having to load it, compare. And we want to compare data train pipeline and data train imputed, encoded, normalized. And we run this and there we go. There are no differences. So these two are exactly the same. This one just involves a bunch of steps saved as different variables. And this one does it all in one step in one pipe. Now, before I end this video, I want to very quickly show you how you can do all of this in a much more concise and cleaner way using a, a package called recipes. So install packages recipes. Um, do you want to just uh, no? Let that install. So recipes actually provides you with functions for doing each of these steps without you having to deal with using deploy R to like mutate or to drop um, or to select and that kind of stuff. So let's let, okay, that's loaded. So recipes, we load recipes. So because recipes is, is somewhat of a new package, um, you might encounter issues which you know, don't don't get worried they're easily fixable you see i tried to load recipes and it said that a package called generics is at version 0 0.0 0.2 that's what we have but we need 0 0.1.0 to use recipes um so what i did was i just reinstalled generics which updated it to version um, 0 0.1.0 .0, and then i reinstalled recipes and then now we're working it's working. I was able to load recipes. So don't worry. Everything is fixable. Let me just go ahead and close all of these up here. Okay. So we have recipes loaded. If you go into here, recipes, step. Okay, there we go. So these are the, the steps, the different pre-processing steps you can do uh, with recipes. Some of them might look familiar. Median impute, right? mean impute uh, imputing with a, the mean okay and then impute that's we covered that in the slides and you know different ways of pre-processing the data down sampling creating dummy variables that that this is the encoding function etc so let's let's go ahead and use these to replace everything we did here with recipes so we start with the data train and the first thing we have to do is we have to create a recipe. To do that, we use the recipe function. Okay, so this is the first thing you have to do. You, you create a recipe. And then the first step we did was we created a BMI variable, right? We did some feature engineering. So we can use step mutate. So step mutate is from the recipes package. BMI equals mass divided by height times height. The next step is to uh, remove rows that contain missing values for the height and the gender variables. So step omit, we would call, or na omit. Na omit for which variables? Height and gender. And then we want to impute using the mean any missing values within the mass and the BMI variable. So step mean impute we would use, and you can use median impute as well, but we're using mean impute. And we do that for the mass and the BMI variables. And then we want to encode the categorical variable as dummy variables. So we want to do one hot encoding that's done using dummy. And we want to do that for the gender feature, gender variable. And finally, we want to normalize. 
everything. And then we want to prepare this recipe. So for, for every recipe, you need to start it with recipe and end it with prep. And these are all the different steps. And you can add as many steps as you want. And each step, you know, you, you specify which column it should apply to. Now, if we were to run this, we get a recipe and it gives us a description of it. Inputs, there are four variables and the training data contains 66 data points and 22 incomplete rows. And the operations that we follow are variable mutation for BMI, removing rows with NA values and height and gender, mean imputation for mass and BMI, dummy variables for gender, centering and scaling for height, mass, BMI, and gender masculine. So it gives us a very nice description, a recipe basically, of all our pre-processing steps, which is very cool. Now, we can save this as a recipe. Let's save this as data recipe. And we can juice this recipe. So juice the recipe and that gives us the actual processed data. So just the data recipe on its own is the recipe. It's a description of the steps of all the pre-processing steps. And then when we juice it, we get the actual processed data, you know, the data that went through all the steps. And to compare to, to make sure that this is the same as data train pipeline or even data train imputed, encoded, normalized, we can use Waldo again. Compare. Let's save this as data pre processed. data pre-processed and data what was this called up here train pipeline no differences and we can even compare it with this Again, no differences. So this actually essentially, you know, allowed us to do in a much easier, much more concise way, everything we did up here. So that's recipes for you. I will see you in the next videos.